talking with you fine folks. We are definitely enjoying our uh, time. Um, I was actually hearing some of the conversations that Kim and folks were having earlier, and they were talking about some very interesting things uh, with some folks about the economy and things of that nature. So we're checking out what they had going on with Economics Mondays, and that's what they have going on here at IBM TV on a regular basis. So I heard some very interesting conversations, like my buddy Lynn. I wish I had heard more of the conversation, but I have to go back in and listen to more of it in detail. So definitely looking forward to that as well. So they were having some very interesting conversations. Some of it was related to stuff that I've been involved in over the last several days and everything. For example, they were talking about the use of beats and things of that nature. So that is very good that they were talking about that. And I actually had a conversation with my dad about beats. And y'all know I have a new blender and all of that going on. So I was uh, trying to figure out what I could experiment with the blender. And dad was telling me that I might want to the next time I do a kale recipe, put some beets in that blender and do that as part of what I blend up. But he was saying that I might have to be careful with that because when I decide to use the, uh, you know, when the body gets its natural thing and going on and everything, I might get a little startled because sometimes the stuff can come out blood red because of the beets and all of that. But he's that one said it was good for you and don't panic if that it goes on in the body so i'm not going to panic if that happens if i decide to eat some beets and then i had another friend of mine that was um involved and in everything and they were talking about the fact of uh um, I said it was one of my cousins. They were talking about uh, the fact that, you know, they were talking about contact uh, tracing and some of the things that are going on with the pandemic that we're in the middle of. And apparently some of our area universities, as well as some national universities, are offering certifications in ways that you can do contact tracing and things of that nature. So definitely looking forward to that and looking forward uh, to all of that as well. So uh, I've actually got the privilege of having two amazing guests on and maybe even a third one. I'm not sure if the third one is in the studio with me yet or not. But I do want us to bring on uh, both Dean Geronimo. That is my uh, good buddy that I do the uh, podcast with, Dean Geronimo, and he's right there. Hey, <laughs> Dean, how's it going there? Dean and me are oftentimes involved in the wide world of uh, podcasting, and I've got Dean right here in the house with me. So yes, we are. Got it going on. So uh, how are you doing, Dean? It looks like you are relaxing at your home on Memorial Day. So that is very good that you are relaxing at home. <laughs> so uh, you got that going on. And, you know, right. <laughs> people sometimes tease me. They're like, they're like who's that man behind the scenes? Because, you know, he sits in there and he maneuvers all the advertising and makes sure that the guests are going on when we're doing straight talk with Dean and Mark. Yeah. And you just run that interview like you like a master of interviewing or something. But we want to know who the man is behind the scenes, the man who was doing all the great uh, maneuvering and things of that nature. And that would be Dean Geronimo, who, like I said we have uh, not physically met. This is actually the closest we've come to actually physically meeting and everything. Cheers. Yes, <laughs> but uh, we've actually been involved for a number of years. You know, yeah. had a cool friend that connected us together, and we've been doing that podcast, Straight Talk with Dean and Mark, for six years, and we've had some amazing guests. As a matter of fact, I was ready to call you, Dean, to tell you. We got some very good news earlier today, so I can share that news with you right now because I learned that um, there's going to be a young lady on that is connected with the Barack Obama Foundation. But um, oh, wow. Roberta, and I'm trying to think of Roberta's last name, but she's one of Shree's friends. You know, Shree is always connecting me with people left and right, but she's got a major a foundation there in Virginia and she's worked with Barack and she actually worked with a major network. I think it was ABC with, uh, and has done interviews with Ed Bradley. So she's going to have all kinds of Ooh. great stories to share with us once we line up the interview, but she was impressed with that interview we did with Nadine Hack and mm -hmm. all of that. So she's definitely excited about joining our show. So, you know, we keep getting amazing guests, and we're going to keep lining them up both for here as well as other places as well. So oh, yeah. definitely got that going on. So, Dean, just let folks know, and then we'll bring Tim into the conversation <laughs> as well, a little bit about yourself and what you've got going on in the world. So definitely, oh, there's Tim. I definitely want to bring Tim into the conversation. Tim has been teaching me the wonders of digital media. So definitely appreciate that. Tim has taught me all kinds of things about digital media. He's been offering that course, and he's still offering 
a course that'll be coming up in uh, next month, in June. So it'll be yes. a new course coming our way. So I've got these two folks that are here with me and everything. Uh, and I think that Kim is gonna jump on the conversation with us also. So Kim, if you wanna come back into the conversation, we would love to have you into the conversation as well. You've heard me talking about Dean and now you've got a face to go with Dean. So if you wanna come back <laughs> into the conversation, Kim, I would love that. Well, I'm well. just gonna pop in for a minute because I am the senior executive producer of IBM.TV and I have only got to meet uh, Dean via phone. So I right. just wanted to pop in and introduce myself. Hi, Dean. Hello. So welcome. <laughs> And thank, thank you. you for showing up so that we could actually see the face to the wonderful voice and the wonderful thank face. I guess and, I owe um, you an intro, you, huh? hmm? I guess I owe you an intro, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to let you guys have your talk show. I'm okay. going to be the director today, so okay. I'm going to beam out. And, uh, Tim, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. And you guys enjoy. Okay. I'm going to sit back and enjoy the conversation. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So there we go. Um, so we've got everybody on their call right now. I don't know. Mona may be joining. She's a comedian friend of mine. I'm going to see if she's going to pop in. But in the meantime, we'll just have a conversation as well. But uh, so uh, we'll start off. Uh, Tim, tell me how you got involved in this whole thing with digital media. And then I want to hear more about Dean's backstory. Because like I said, we met through a mutual friend of ours. And we've been running with this straight talk thing for a while. So uh, definitely, Tim, tell us how you got involved in uh digital media and what digital media means to you and how important it is. You're up there in Pennsylvania. So also let us know how you and your family are doing because we are in the middle of this horrible pandemic that we're in the middle of. So if you want to share just how y'all are surviving and how things are going there in Pennsylvania, you're kind of in the uh, country part of Pennsylvania, but share a little bit about that story with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Mark and Dean. Uh, I am here in the woods in Pennsylvania, as I like to say, with the bears and the turkeys, although I haven't seen a bear in a while. Uh, and uh, our family is doing fine. We're, we're navigating the, uh, the new ways where, well, I've always worked from home, but my wife is a teacher, so she's teaching from home. Our eight-year-old is learning from home, and we also have a five-year-old. So balancing all of that is a, uh, a fine art of which... I have yet to master, but uh, so, so, we're, so we're doing fine. Um, uh, how I got into digital marketing, um, well, I, I, w I did work in journalism uh, for 12 plus years. I worked at newspapers around the country, and uh, the last newspaper I worked at was a startup newspaper in Morris County in Lake of Hacon, New Jersey. And uh, unfortunately, only lasted one year. It was right when newspapers were falling off a cliff, uh, right around, I believe, 2010, 2000, somewhere in there. Uh, so I ended up getting married and we had kids. And my wife had bought a piece of land here in uh, the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania. So I decided instead of trying to find another newspaper job, it, probably like a two hour commute for a decent job. Uh, that I would do some freelance writing and editing for some publications. And I edit, ended up uh, interviewing brands and publishers about how they were using social media. And then I just gave it a shot to offer uh, social media services to local businesses, initially a uh, social media consulting for small businesses, especially uh, like brick and mortar stores, restaurants, and things like that. Um, and two years ago, I started the Tim and Jim show with my friend Jim Fuse, who lives in, uh, well, now he lives in uh, near Atlanta, Georgia. He used to live in North Carolina. And uh, I also have another show, The Family First Show, where I interview parents who are also entrepreneurs about how they juggle work and life, which is appropriate, especially right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's a lot that you're doing, and you've always been keeping busy with that. Tell people a little bit about the course. Like I said, I've been taking the course. Yeah. And also, I want to bring uh, Dean back into the conversation as well, because you'll be glad to know that Dean is from New Jersey. He lives in New Jersey oh. right now, and he's actually been involved in the corrections field for a number of years. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to pull him up as well. So hopefully Dean will pop back up into the conversation and everything, because I know that he might have some things to say about what's going on in New Jersey as well. But just tell people about the course. Yeah, absolutely. So the course is called Survive with Live Video. Uh, we're just uh, uh, approaching the end of the course that uh, Mark is 
in that one will be wrapping up this coming week. But on June 1st, we're starting a second round of the Survive with Live video course. And what it is, it's a two month course. Uh, so if you're looking to launch your own live show, perhaps something like this, uh, or it could look, there's many different ways you could do a live show. But if you're a, a business owner, or you're a marketer, or you're an entrepreneur, you're a nonprofit, live video is a great way to connect with uh, whether you want to get more members to your organization, or whether you want to get more customers to your business, or uh, just build relationships with people. Uh, the great thing about live video is that it's a two-way conversation, right, Mark? Exactly. Two-way conversation all the time, and we're liking having this two-way conversation, and sometimes it can even be a three-way conversation. So, uh, Dean, tell folks a little bit about yourself. Like I said, I know about you and everything, but definitely wanted to hear more about what you've got going on and things of that nature. You mean everything or just a couple of things? Just a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'll, I'll just put it like this. I am the six-man Dean Geronimo, co-host and producer of uh, Straight Talk with Dean and Mark Monday nights on blogtalkradio.com. Also the co-host of the Let's Talk About It radio show on WBKS1.com out of Plainfield, New Jersey. And like I start to show off when we do it on Monday nights from NJ to NC, I'm in the studio with my man Mark Lee. However, this time we're on IBM TV. Exactly. Appreciate that. You did a great job with that introduction <laughs> and everything. So definitely greatly appreciate that. So uh, also uh, tell folks a little bit about the other shows that you're involved with. Because like I said, you're involved with a number oh, of things. Wow. And like I said, Tim's over there in New Jersey. So why don't you tell him about your involvement with New Jersey and also a little bit about your work in the correction system? Because Tim's uh, over there in the country part. You actually have to deal with the real city. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I've been in New Jersey now. A total of about 22 years. And for the last 20 years, I worked for the Department of Corrections. Part of my time was in Virginia. The other part was is here in New Jersey. We do the offender programming, so we try to help offenders prepare themselves to better themselves so that they leave prison in a better state than which they came in. So that's what, on my end, I'm out of uniform now, so I don't have to worry about the harder part. But it's still hard presenting those therapeutic programs and trying to um, change offender behavior. But the change starts with them. So to get them to see that they are valuable, they are needed by their families, they can become pro-social law-abiding citizens. That's what we do here in the Department of Corrections. So um, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. But you were saying that and you've done some amazing work in in that field. But, you know, you're like um, you um, Tim was talking about his wife being a teacher. You also have a wife that is involved in uh, the field of being involved in work as well. She's an entrepreneur and has done a number of things. So y'all are like the greatest of partners. I think that that's kind of what I can tell you about Tim and his wife as well. So talk about what that partnership means to you and how important that partnership is. And of course, I'd like to hear from Tim how important his uh, wife is in his business as well. So if you, if you would share a little bit about that importance of the uh, wives to you, because like I said, I unfortunately am still in that single camp, but the two of you are married, ple- pleasantly married. And in your case, you've got grands. Uh, I don't, you know, yeah. Tim's only got a five and, a, you know, he got young kids still. So he hasn't reached the grand yeah. category yet. <laughs> yeah, my son will be 23. My granddaughter will be four in December. So, you know, but having wow. a having a partner, and I'll say I call him my tag team partner because if the support is not there, then there are a lot of things that you are not able to do. Luckily, I have that support, and that support is reciprocated on her end. Um, I call her Dr. Diamond, you know, Dr. April Piercy. That's my better half. She supports me in all of the things that I do, whether it be my fraternity with Omega Sci-Fi, whether it be the Prince Hall Masons, the NAACP, the radio shows. And when you talk about the radio shows, the Level Radio Network. So we do the replays for the Black Girls Guide to Surviving Menopause, the Chef Gang Podcast Radio, um, the Mark Lee Show, you know, <laughs> the Just Podcast. Let's talk about it. And there's one more that's coming on, am I correct? Yeah, Mona is going to be coming with us yeah. in the near future, so we're hoping to have her 
on as well. So we've got this little network that we're putting together and we're definitely enjoying that network. Tim, why don't you share a little bit about what uh, the wife means? I know I've been on a couple of the uh, classes with you and your young girls who are so precious love to join in the conversation. So that's always fun when they jump into uh, and give us their little uh, tidbits. Like I said, they are young children, but they are also some very smart young children. So I like when they add their two cents worth. So share what that means to you your wife's uh, support as well as the support of your kids. Cause you've got young kids and I think that they're already budding superstars. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll say one of the awesome things about this, obviously this whole coronavirus thing is a tragedy for so many people, but one of the cool things about it has been that Megan, our eight year old has really gotten a lot more interested in um, what I do for a living because she was usually at school all day and that's usually when I'm doing my work. So that's been really cool. And uh, she has appeared in in some of the videos, especially in our Survive With Live program. She would come down and uh, I use a sound effects app on my phone sometimes that so she would want to hit all the sound effects. And uh, yeah, so uh, in terms of my wife, she yeah, I, I could not have my business if my wife was not so supportive at all. Um, like often Sri says how he wouldn't be able to... Um, to do all of his shenanigans without his wife Rupa's support, it is the same in my world as well because I could not have this business as uh, without her support. Because, especially uh, while during doing this Survive with Live video program, because we have so many awesome people, but there are twenty five people in the program from all around the world, which is amazing. Uh, but it does take a lot of time and energy, so. Um, so especially very grateful for my wife, Joy. She brings me much joy, as I like to say. And uh, especially with all that's going on right now, uh, she's balancing uh, or juggling <laughs> teaching herself while teaching our children and and all the rest that goes along with it. So she she is the she's the most patient person that I know in the world. And I'm super grateful to have her as my wife. Good. Sounds great. Um, and what grade is she teaching? Because you definitely said that she's teaching and everything. Yeah, she teaches uh, math and physics at the high school level. Wow. So she's teaching those hard-headed kids. Hey, that's almost as bad as some of the folks that you have to deal with, Dave. I mean, you're dealing with the presidents and she's teaching those hard-headed high school kids and trying to teach them physics at that. <laughs> Hey, much harder than what we're teaching right there. <laughs> math and physics. Yeah. Tough classes and salute to all the children uh, and the students, I should say, that are succeeding in those. Maybe they're going to a um, STEM program. Maybe they'll become engineers. That wasn't my thing. You know, basic basic math was it. So business administration, it was, you know. <laughs> oh, I understand. Yeah. I, like I said, I took a physics class in high school, and that class kicked my backside. I remember having a physics teacher that put down this whole complicated puzzle. And I think she was from Laos, the country of Laos. And she did this whole complicated puzzle, put it all on the wall, did all this stuff. And then in the middle of the presentation, she looked back at us and, you know, imagine these kids in the – 70s so we were all you know bright-eyed bushy-tailed teenagers and she looks back at us she's like by the way i'm not sure that this is right and we're sitting there going like wait a minute you're the teacher and you're not sure what the heck are we supposed to do with this copy the answer and turn it in like hey look this is what we came up with even after we worked it out <laughs> copy the answer and be like this is what you gave us this is, must be the right answer because this is what you said. Whether you said it was right or not, it's what you said. Therefore, yeah. it's right. <laughs> I like that philosophy. I think we got to try that in the more adult life and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of like toss it out there. It might work. It might not work. Right. So, uh, Tim, tell us a little bit about the course in the sense of where these students are coming from. Because I'm oftentimes amazed. You've got some people that are doing some really cool stuff. Like you got the young lady that is creating a course around the Brooklyn uh, Navy Yard, and then you got yeah. the gentleman who's from India, I believe, and he did a show um, that involved somebody from North Carolina. So you got a number wow. of great uh, folks that are creating some great shows. Don't have to talk about all of them, but if you would just share yeah. maybe a few of those storylines and some of the folks that are in the course and what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, so the other day, two of our uh, class uh, students, whatever you want to call them, uh, Gabrielle and AK. AK is in India and Gabrielle is in North Carolina. Gabrielle is a, um, 
a career coach. She helps people with LinkedIn and revamping their resumes and helping them, you know, find a new job, which is so important, especially right now. And AK is a global recruiter who's based in India. So the other day they did a show together. AK uh, started his show. Uh, and Gabrielle was on as a guest and uh, it was a really, really good conversation. Um, Julia Weeks started a show called Navy Yard Neighbor BK for Brooklyn. I guess there's multiple Navy Yards in the United States. Uh, so she uh, just she just had a politician on uh, on Sunday. Uh, she had a, uh, a business called Turnstile Tours, uh, one of her other episodes. Um, so, so that's really cool. She also has a co-host on her show. So, so I always like having a co-host on my shows because if you have a co-host and a guest, then you only have to talk one third of the time probably. So <laughs> one of the perks of having a co-host. Um, that is a great perk, unless you got a co-host like Dean who likes to sit back in the in the cut and just kind of like interject whenever he feels like it because he knows I'm gonna run my mouth anyway on a regular basis. He's <laughs> learned that about me. He's learned that I'm gonna just run my mouth, but he will bring in some thoughts and some ideas during the course of the conversation. If somebody says something that he does not feel is right, he has been known to jump in and everything. So, Dean, I got a question for you. We've been doing this for six years um, and everything, so I'm just curious of the many shows that we have done. Do you have a favorite? Is there like an absolute favorite show that you just like go back on whenever you feel like reflecting on the many years that we've been doing this show? And it's a, like whether it's a subject matter, whether it's somebody that you knew personally, whether it's somebody that you learned something about. But is there any particular show that really struck you as something that you really were interested in as we've been doing this for a number of years? You know what? I, I, I like them all. And I guess because we take our time, you know, the guests come in, you're able to have that conversation with them and you're able to, it's not one sided. If you understand what I'm saying, it flows. And then we have multiple guests. I just sit back and listen because you can get a lot of things from a lot of places and learn a lot of uh, new things as well. So when you look at what show was the best, I would have to go back and listen to all those shows to figure out which one I really liked out of all of them and you, you figure we got to go back six years so you know I, I i liked them all because we put our heart and our soul and our energy into what we do it's, it wasn't something that started out like let's see how this works and then we halfway did it we went full throttle from day one so now here we are year six we're still rolling you know we started out with no following whatsoever and look at those analytics and say 73 countries all 50 states and i look and i say wow man we, we've done something special here which makes all of our shows special and yeah, I, i'm definitely. not and, like you said we you know created not, a network and i appreciate that and definitely right. you've created this amazing network and like i said i've definitely shriek um and tim will be glad to know this has Definitely helped us find some amazing guests, whether that's been Sonny Slaughter, whether that's been Nadine Hack, whether that's been uh, Lippy Roy or a number of others that he's helped us find. But, you know, you've also reached into your pool of folks. I remember when you brought us Crystal and you brought us a couple of other folks. So definitely uh, share some of those stories of some of the folks that you found as well. Because like I said, definitely I have some contacts to my contacts and the people that I've been involved in in the arts and political activism. But, you know, I don't want folks to think that it's just my stuff alone and that you're not involved in the process. So definitely share with folks some of the folks <laughs> that you brought on the board. I definitely mentioned Crystal, but that's not the only one. You brought others and we're in the talks with Tangi and some others about joining the show very shortly. So definitely share some of that with us. Some of them are people who I know know and they have interesting stories where it's like, you know what? And that's what we do. We tell those stories that are not often heard. So it's like, you know what? Got a show if you're interested on being in it, you know, on it. I'll have Mark Lee give you a call because you're better at scheduling and all that stuff that I'm, I know my lane, you know? <laughs> so we forward it and then they get on the show and it's, it's a good thing to hear them and then let them tell their story. Because like I said, a lot of times you hear one group of things all the time and then you're able to hear different stories so you know some of them are just i might be browsing on the web and it's an interesting story and i'll send a message it's almost like fishing so it's kind of like 
I put it out there. It's like, hey, would you be interested in being on our show? Name of the show is, instead of just leaving it open, I go into a little bit more detail to let you know what the show is, what we do, and it's just a basic conversation. And most people yeah. great, gratefully have said yes, and they come on and they enjoy and have a good time, and then it broadens our network. It builds those bridges where if we just say, hey, you want to be on our show? Mm, no. <laughs> what is your show? What do you do? What's your platform? Who are you trying to reach? You know, I have a thousand questions. So if I have a thousand questions, I can just imagine someone else having those same questions. So try to answer as many as I can up front. I'm not pushing you. Your your story is interesting and you need to tell it. So now would you like to tell it? And most people jump at that opportunity. I might be one of the only few to say, you know what? I'm good in the background. Let me just run the board and um, bring the callers in, and, <laughs> and we're good. Tim, tell a little bit about your show and your way you work your show. Like I said, you've done a number of shows as well, and we might have to get you on our network as well because we'd like to be diverse with the network, both yes. this network with IBM TV as well as the next level and everything. But just tell folks a little bit about what you do with those shows, and do you wind up doing the com- the bulk of the conversation, or do y'all split it half and half? Or do you have somebody that's more like, what Dean is to me, that they sit back in the cut. You might be the person that sits back in the cut and let the other person do the majority of the interview. And how does it work in your format in the two shows that you run? Yeah, sure. So so the Tim and Jim show is uh, myself and Jim Fuse of Fusion Marketing. And then we have a guest on every Wednesday at noon. And it's all about uh, marketing, entrepreneurship, and public relations to grow small businesses. So... Um, in terms of uh, who speaks the most, I would say it, it varies. Um, for each show, we, we both uh, invite people to come on and, as guests. So I would say the person that invites the person on probably speaks the most because they know the better. Um, they probably did more research and that kind of thing. Um, so that's really how it works. Uh, in terms of the Family First show, it's just myself and a guest. So. Um, so it just depends on the guest in terms of who speaks the most. Usually the guest speaks, you know, I ask the questions and she answers. But I did want to tell you guys about this one show I did on the Family First show with uh, Brian Schulman. I know, Mark, you know Brian, right? Yes. So, uh, so Brian came on the Family First show. Brian has an amazing story. Uh, he has a business called Voice Your Buy, but he also, he's a LinkedIn influencer uh, he does two live shows called Shout Out Saturday and What's Good Wednesday. And he puts all of the attention on LinkedIn onto other people. He shines the spotlight on others. He brings people on live, uh, not just in the comments, but actually brings them on the screen like we're doing here right now. And he brings the spotlight on others. But when I, when I invited him on the, the Family First show, he, uh, you know, I said, so, you know, so what's your sort, like, what's your background? What's your, what's your deal? So, so he reads this story from his, his daughter. She was a senior in high school at the time. And uh, it was an essay and it, and it was all about him and it, and it was so moving. And usually when I do shows, I have all my questions sketched out. Sure. I might do follow up questions, but um but once I heard that, I was like, that's it. All of the questions are changing right there uh, because it was, it was just a, such a moving story. And I just wanted to ask him, I wanted it to be like, what was your, re- what was your reaction to her, you know, writing this letter and you reading it? And, and it was just like, it just like tugged at your heartstrings, you know? And uh, I think some, those are some of the best interviews when, when somebody says something you don't expect it and the conversation just goes somewhere that that you had no idea it was going to go there, you know? Do you guys know what I mean? Yeah, we've had a number of conversations like that. I can't think of any right off the top of my head, but I know there's been a couple of times that we've been talking to people and I might have had it already in my mind where the conversation was going to go, but then they took it in a whole other direction. I would even argue the conversation kind of with uh, Nadine. Uh, Nadine Hack was kind of that way. I didn't have a real idea of which way that conversation was going to go. And that was one of the one-on-one interviews. And then, like I said, let's learn it all that she had in terms of her background. I had some idea that I would touch on that, but then she carried in at a couple of other directions. And that's actually how we wound up getting uh, the lady connected with uh, 
the Barack Obama Foundation because she actually heard that interview. She was like, Mark, that was a great interview. And I'm like, well, I was just doing what I think I usually do. I think they're all pretty good interviews, but she, <laughs> one compliment led to the possibility of others. And I think that happened with some people that heard the Sunday Slaughter interview when we did that one as well. So definitely sometimes you hear these uh, interviews or you pass them on to other people and that's kind of what gets folks engaged and they want to be on the platform. Now, one of the things that we've done recently, which has really made it for some interesting conversation, at least that's what I think. And I've actually come up with a uh, new tagline. You know, I've come up with a new tagline in my emails uh, and I'm going to share it with you right now. I think both of you will enjoy that. But as I've been talking to folks um, about getting on the show, you know, lately, I'd say over the last six months to a year, we've had multiple guests. Sometimes, you know, you want to talk about somebody that's really got to work hard now. Dave's got to work even harder because I think we've had at least the last two or three weeks, we've had as many as eight or nine guests. So he's got to really maneuver those phones and really maneuver who's calling in because I've invited, you know, several people. And sometimes I know, you know, sometimes you try to be a little overly cautious. So you might invite more than we actually need. So there've been a a couple of times that we've had eight or nine that have showed up and the conversation or six or seven, might have been, but definitely it's been more of a round table kind of conversation lately, kind of what we're doing here on IBM TV. And I was watching the show earlier and they had like four or five people on. So it's more of a round table kind of discussion. So what I started telling people in the emails is imagine before the pandemic, the best dinner party you ever went to and think of it on the radio. Like you actually could hear the conversation on the radio. And that's what we're having. We're having right. an online radio version of a dinner party. So like I said, the people wind up, I do some introductions, but we try to get everybody introduced so that everybody knows who folks are. And then we wind up having some back and forth conversations. Now, every once in a while, Dean or myself have to practice the mute button because some of the people <laughs> don't know exactly how to serve in, in a dinner party. And they want to kind of like, you know, take over the conversation and yes. do things of that nature. So every once in a while, we yes. have to referee the conversation. But uh, if Kim's still listening, she'll get a kick out of that because she <laughs> says that uh, her business partner does that as well here on IBM TV because sometimes he has that same kind of feeling that sometimes folks are just a little bit too ambitious and want to say a little bit too much. So sometimes you have to put them on the mute. We do try to get back to them, let them know that we do want to hear their point of view and everything. But I know there've been a couple of times that either myself or Dean have had to reach for that mute button because they were trying to jump in (laughs) and, you know, go head to head, toe to toe, whatever analogies you want to use. And we had to like put a little bit of a referee hat on. So, Dean's used to be at a referee. <laughs> Don't take it personal, right? <laughs> That's right. It's not a personal thing. It's just something you got to do sometimes. You got to referee the conversation and everything. Yeah. You know, and we can talk about how, you know, we had a former person who was involved in our show that we really had to referee a lot, but we not having to deal with that. But even the new people, we still have to referee them sometimes. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit here and there. But definitely, it's been some great conversations. I know that happened on the last show that we had. And then the other thing people sometimes ask me, and I was just wondering, um, I always tell them this because of, of us trying to be respectful of the holidays and things of that nature. So that being said, um, you know, we don't oftentimes do the shows with um, around the holiday time because we want to give people a chance to have a break with the holiday and things of that nature. So like we said, we're not doing a show this evening because it's Memorial Day weekend. I think the same is slated for the 4th of July weekend and things of that nature. But that was more of a Dean decision because sometimes <laughs> before the pandemic, Dean would run away on holidays, him and his lovely wife. But yeah, lately you know they've not what? had the chance to run away on these particular holidays. Remember what I said we're on Monday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time except for holidays where you can catch replays of our past shows. So. That's right. You can definitely catch those replays. I think this replay this week is the one with our drummer friend, Bradley Simmons, if I remember yes. correctly. So yes. that's the rerun that we've got airing this particular Monday. So they can still catch us, even though we will not be physically having the conversation on the phone and doing the dialogue that we usually do. I think that I just saw that Mona is trying to join our conversation as well. So I'm hoping that Mona is in the studio with us. Mona is a masterful comedian who has also been on my show, uh, the Straight Talk with Dean and Mark show with Dean. And, you know, we really enjoyed having Mona on the show. Mona had us cracking up, didn't didn't she, Dean? Yes, she did. (laughs) 
She has cracking up left and right. So I'm hoping Mona will be joining this conversation. I did see her trying to get on. So if Anchor or somebody can see if they can get Mona on, that would be greatly appreciated. So we'll see if they can't bring her on because she's a very funny comedian is calling us from the California area. So I'm hoping that she's on the line. So Mona, are you there with us? I saw her trying to pop in, so they might be talking to her, so I'll see if she's ready. And in the meantime, we'll just keep this conversation going and everything, because I did see her trying to pop in. Uh, oh, so there she goes. I just checked on, tweaked, and she told me to give her about a few minutes, and she'll be back with us in a minute. So we'll check on that in a few minutes when she'll pop back in and, and definitely enjoy that. So uh, just tell us a little bit about y'all's contrast, because y'all are in two parts of New Jersey. So I want to hear y'all's take on each other's parts of New Jersey. So, Dean, I'm going to go to you first, and you tell me your assessment of the country part of New Jersey, and then we're going to hear Tim's <laughs> assessment of the city part of New Jersey. So it's your turn first. So you, you get know, your assessment of the country part of New Jersey. I don't know if I would call it country or laid back. I'm from originally from Petersburg, Virginia. So, you know, it's... Uh, township where i live everybody has a front yard a backyard it's kind of quiet you can hear the cicadas in the summertime so it's like home you know so i i can't complain i did live in north jersey for a while where all the houses were stuck together i lived in a building so there was no front or backyard you know but now being in the southern part of new jersey past exit seven going towards delaware you know, you get to have those, for me, comforts of home. You know, my, my granddaughter can go in the backyard and we don't have to worry about her playing in the street or a whole bunch of people. You know, our neighbors are, are terrific. You know, we've been in this house 16 years. So to have a, a good group of neighbors around you, a decent neighborhood, I can't complain. Exactly. And uh, Tim, share a little bit about what the part of New Jersey is to you, where you're at and everything. Well, I'm actually in Pennsylvania, but I do live about a half an hour from Montague, New Jersey, which is the very most northwest town in New Jersey. Yes, yes. <laughs> I live in a town called Shahola, Pennsylvania. Okay. Which is about um, it's about a half an hour from Milford, Pennsylvania. Milford is near the uh, the border with Montague. There's a toll bridge over the Delaware River, and uh, yeah, here it's very peaceful. We're in the woods. We're on a dirt road. Our kids love it. They, they love just seeing the the deer and the, the turkeys and, and all the wildlife and everything. So, um, yeah. Cool. Well, you know, uh, real quickly, y'all have one thing in common, which is the whole sports thing, because I know that Dean is a big-time Baltimore fan, and he's a real big-time Ravens fan. I'm imagining that you probably root for one of them Pennsylvania teams, but we won't hold that against you, but you might be like a Pittsburgh Steelers fan or something like that, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I, I really don't even follow the sports much at all, to be honest. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Like I said, Dean's a big sports fan. You've actually teased me about that, that you're not that big of a sports fan, enjoying more of the mother nature and everything. And like I said, we do have Mona in the studio with us. I'm so glad to have the lovely and beautiful Mona, the talented comedian and just charming woman that she is. And she does all kinds of amazing things. We were just talking about you. Dean was saying that we're looking forward to having you on our platform since you've agreed that you're going to be on that next level platform that we've got and everything. And I just enjoyed having you on the show. And so that was really uh, good and really enjoyed having that conversation with you. So, uh, Mona, tell a little bit about what you've got going on. And I love your comedy because you're always very able to break down how a lot of the things that we've got going on in the world now, you know, the mass, everything else. You folks that are like of Middle Eastern descent were doing that for years ahead of the curve before the disease and everything else. So just tell a little bit about your what you got going on and tell a little bit about that show that you got on Friday. You know, I made it a religion almost to join it on a regular basis. I love checking out the show and catching it. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you always. It's, uh, thank you for having me. It's so uh, always you, you're so sweet. You're you're you know, you're uh I have to send you like a gift basket of something for being the best fan or something. Uh, maybe I can like fill it up with like a box of hot mess or something. Uh, and I'm not even Middle Eastern, so it's great. Um, I'm South Asian. I'm Pakistani. So, uh, right. you know, but that's okay. It's, you know, it's just a different shade of brown. So what are you right. going to do? 
No, it's all it's all good. I actually, you know what? Uh, this week, believe it or not, I've been doing the show for two months already. Uh, and this week, I just feel a little burnt out. So I'm just kind of taking this week, this Friday, I'm taking a week off. Uh, and then I'm reconnecting again next Friday. Uh, so sorry to disappoint you. But that's why I wanted to come on uh, and be here and do this. You know, uh, my hair looks a little disastrous. Uh, because when you messaged me, I totally like zoned out. Uh, uh, because I was too busy eating chocolates uh, and just totally zoned out. And uh, so thank you for reminding me. Sorry. And there's my dog barking in the back uh, because my dog is always excited when somebody uh, is coming by the door. Uh, but no, yeah, that's what's going on. I mean, um, I have the, you know, the, the Friday shows. My, you know, what I'm trying to do with the show is I'm just really trying to bring in comedians from around the world. So uh, the reason I'm, that, that I'm taking a week off is because I want to go and reconnect uh, and want to bring in comics from the Middle East and from South Africa uh, and from South Asia. So I'm just trying to bring in as many uh, comics as I can uh, before our president tells us to drink more bleach. Uh, so I'm just trying to, <laughs> you know, just trying to just trying to help out there. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Did, did bleach and Lysol sales go up because he encouraged people to drink it? Did, did, it, did that happen? Does anybody know about the bleach stock? What's happening with the bleach stock? I'm know? thinking bleach stock might be going up. We might have to actually get some uh, stock market value in the, you know, find out what the number one company is. Maybe it's Clorox, something like that. And we might have to start investing in it because Listen, the man, stock I'm- may have gone way up. But, but, you know, he's also always doing in crazy, incredible, crazy things. Like I understand that he went out golfing and did some other things. And, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. He's out golfing. Go ahead, By the go. way, you know what? That's the only workout that he gets. Uh, I did like Nancy Pelosi dunking on him this past week, calling him morbidly <laughs> obese, like legit just dunking on him. Like, yeah. And just like with a straight face, like no emotion, just a very matter of fact, like she has his BMI or something like she has his weight. Like she she got like his medical report and was just like, yeah, he's morbidly obese. Uh, <laughs> you know, screw that guy. Uh, he needs to lose weight. Dude, is golfing even a form of workout? Like, doesn't he have to go to the gym or something for this? Like, how how does this work out? Like, you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether golfing even counts as a workout. I mean, I, I don't think it does. a big time golfer, and I think golfing should be a workout. You do a lot of walking, but you also do a lot of riding in that lovely cart and everything. And I'm thinking he does more riding than he does walking. I know I had a uh, – my aunt told me recently that she was listening to somebody on the news and they said that Biden has come up with a new nickname for him. And I like the new nickname. Apparently, he's calling him Captain Tweety Bird. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh. Trump is calling <laughs> Biden that, right? Tweety Bird? No, Biden is calling Trump that. Oh, Tweety Bird. Oh, I like it. I like. You know what? <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff we need from the Democratic side. Because he has nickname. Trump has nicknames for everyone, like Sleepy Joe and whatever. Like, he comes up with these different names. I think the Democratic side needs to start sawing some jabs, like, start coming up with nicknames. Because, you know, it's like, I, I don't even know if Biden can even get in the dirt with him and just like wrestle him down because he's just he's so obnoxious right he just has no boundaries he's like i'll cross those boundaries my supporters are coming through with me he just doesn't give a damn so i think we need someone who's going to come up with nicknames we need you know i think biden's uh you know speeches should be written by stand-up comics uh, I think, you know, his retort should be written by stand up comics, just like roast him. You know, like when he goes toe to toe with Trump and when that debate happens, I say a stand up comic should be writing that. That he should hire like Neil Brennan or like Dave Chappelle or like Wanda Sykes, like someone to just come and like roast the crap out of him. Like that's what I want. I like this idea. And now the other thing that you've told me about, and you didn't mention, which, by the way, made me incredibly jealous because I'm upset with your tourist friend. But you did say at one point that this was really messing with your social life, this whole thing that's going on with the uh, pandemic and everything else. Because originally you said that there was like no social life, but apparently some kind of guy, I'm thinking he must be a, a delivery person, snuck into your life. So we don't <laughs> we haven't figured out how he got to your house or anything. But it's you know, Uber I'm, Eats I'm like your number Uber one crush, Eats. so I'm already jealous, but that's all right. I'll get over it. <laughs> Listen, man, you know, these are th- these are these are passing moments. Uh, you know, nothing's forever. So there's that. So, you know, don't don't be so upset. It's it's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. Mark, you should be. Aren't you on like a bunch of dating app? Aren't, aren't you like 
trying to go out there, like trying to thirst some of that, qu- you know, trying to quench some of that thirst, man. What's what's happening? I mean, I want to quench the thirst, but sometimes when you want to quench the thirst, those dating apps are kind of scary. I mean, I've had this conversation with no number of friends, including my good buddy Dean, who doesn't have to worry about this because Dean's a married man, so he ain't got to worry about dating apps or any of that stuff. But I, when I go on there, you know, you find out these wonderful people, and they seem very interesting and fascinating and wonderful. And then they call you, and they sound like they're from Nigeria, and they sound like a dude. So, like I said, you know, when they, they you know, I've amazing. heard of that. I've heard oh. of those scams. I've been hearing like scams happening, or like asking for money, or like yeah. like weird stuff. Yeah, for sure. I think I think it's just I don't I don't know what it's like dating in your state, but you know, dating in California is not the not the best. But you know, we do the best we can. I imagine dating in California. Isn't everybody trying to be either an actor, a director, or a producer, no matter what they're doing? I mean, I imagine that even if you went to the corrections office, Dean works in the corrections office in New Jersey. I bet you even if you went to the corrections office, they'd be telling you that they got a tape for you. And it's either going to be a music tape or it's going to be. Oh, really? Their, they got the mixtape? Tape. <laughs> they, they, they're like, here's my mixtape, man. Don't arrest me. Here's my mixtape. Yes, I'm sure that that's what they got going on. So uh, there's no doubt in my mind that that's what's going on. So both of you, Dean and Mona, what has been the hardest part of this whole pandemic to y'all? I mean, what has just like just totally blown your mind? You're sitting there going like, I cannot have this. I just am not dealing with this whatsoever. I don't know, Dean, you want to go? I mean, I don't know, man. For me, it's uh, I. the number one thing for me is human interaction hands down like I haven't seen my best friend in two months and like we were supposed to meet up today but then he has to go back to work so I can't even see him but I uh yeah I think human interaction uh, a, a, a comedian friend of mine young girl 43 years old passed away last week uh and that's been really hard it's been really hard I knew her really well she was a friend of mine she uh and uh yeah and um you know I can't go to her funeral uh it's rough it's, it's, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I really, you know, it has been troubling to me. Yeah. And what about you, Dean? What's, what's been most troubling to you during this pandemic? Other than the fact that I do have to tease you, Dean, about one thing, though. I do remember when the pandemic first came out and we were having these conversations. You were Mr. Doubting Thomas. You were like, I need to see proof and everything. And now you definitely on board. You realize that it's problematic yeah, and it's um, really going on. But I do remember it when it first came out, you were one of those folks that was teasing was. me going like, I don't know if this is real. Because we get so much information that you have to sift through the BS to find out where the truth is. And that was a fault of our own government because they said, you know what? Hey, don't worry about it. So with limited information, the only thing that we knew, okay, well, this may be a repeat of the SARS before it, which didn't go anywhere, not knowing that the government had already shut all of that stuff down. You know, so we took care of that and then it got out of control. So the misinformation, sometimes the feeding of too much of one thing. Tell us what it is. Tell us how it affects people. You know, we didn't get all of that stuff until later. So now we're trying to sort through that. The biggest thing, though, everybody brought up all the damn toilet paper, man. (laughs) Like, what's the problem? Are you? that full of stuff that that's you why you gotta use bidets Dean. you gotta use bidets man we call it the muslim shower you don't have to worry about the goddamn toilet paper you freaking use the bidets you jet power hose that ass that's what i'm talking about so get it clean real quick right real yeah. clean yeah just real clean, real quick. and we couldn't figure out the whole to- i was like you dean i could not figure out the rush on toilet paper why people were rushing out to get that toilet paper on a regular basis i could not figure that out to save my life i'm sitting there going like why are they rushing to get toilet paper. But then I remember people, I think Kimberly, who's one of our lead producers here, mentioned the fact that even during storms, people will go out and get toilet paper and things of that nature. So I'm guessing that's what they were doing. But I did not understand that either. I'm going like, why are we getting toilet paper? And uh, I think, um, Mona, you've mentioned this before. Not just paper towel. Not just just toilet paper. Paper towels. Like, people people are stupid. Like, you want to build a wall of toilet paper? (laughs) Like, what are you doing? And they didn't buy any soap. Hmm. Yeah, no soap to go with it. The soap was all there for you. That's how it all started, it, Dean. Right? Because people wasn't washing their hands. That's how it that's all true. started, okay? That's well, that's true. what Dean said since the beginning. Dean was nasty like, things. <laughs> yeah, Dean, one of his great arguments when we first started this, even when we talked to some scientists and everything, was like, 
I thought that, that was what you're supposed to do when you grew up. He was like, he remember right. growing up in Virginia and everything right. else. He thought that you were supposed to grow wash up and wash your hands man. on a regular basis after you use the bathroom. That was what common sense is. And he said that a number of times on our show and everything. And the other thing that you brought up on a couple of times is you were really fascinated when people, and I've got a couple behind me and everything, were grabbing the mask and the gloves. And you're sitting there going like, wait a minute. We've been doing this in Pakistan and Palestine yeah. and yeah. all the different countries around uh, Southeast Asia yeah. and the Middle East for years. So you made We've that point. We've been doing that this, this not- forever. <laughs> yeah. But they they turned around and were like giving a shit over it because they yeah. were like, ah, oh, it's a religious thing. It's like, no, you don't understand. We were preparing for the pandemic, man. <laughs> we were preparing for the pandemic. Call us like fortune tellers like we're like you know like futures we can see the future we're like covering your face <laughs> we're just looking out and then people right. were like ah oh, these these crazy muslims covering their faces yeah, these terrorists right along. Yeah, yeah they thought y'all were terrorists and but you know i'm wondering how did you feel and i know you've got friends from around the country that are of different ethnicities including some asian friends i mean like from the more traditional asian not southeast asia where pakistan is but like yeah. china and japan but yeah. I'm thinking that you probably caught a lot of abuse because a lot of people, they think of Pakistan more of like, along with Iranians, more of the Middle Eastern kind of Asian. But yeah. a lot of your friends that are probably J- Chinese and Japanese were catching flag because of where the disease supposedly came from. So uh, what was your take on that? Because I'm sure there were some Chinese friends of yours that were getting abused left and right that used not to be abused. Listen, man, that is like that is I th- I would say that is hands down the most American thing that can happen because I think historically uh, there's a history, there's a pattern, and there's a history in this country of picking on uh, one minority or another, right? If it's not, when it was September 11th, it was Muslims and Arabs, okay? Uh, then now COVID happened, now it's Asians, right? They're not even, they're just lumping all the Asians together. Like, yo, even the Cambodians, like Cambodians, they got nothing to do with this. Like the Japanese, like Korean people don't even know how to differentiate. Like, they're just like, Asians, that's it. I hate you. And it's like, it's so ignorant. It's so stupid. Uh, like, where is the education of that? I, I must confess, I was thinking about this the other day. And I was just like, man, you know, as horrible as this sounds, but it kind of takes the pressure off Muslims and South Asians for and Middle Easterns for a little bit because the whole COVID thing happened. So I was like, oh, we get a break for a little bit. Oh, this is, uh, you know, as awful as this is. Like, like we're, we're finally getting to breathe just a little bit. I know a lot of people can't breathe because of the whole COVID thing, but we're actually kind of getting to breathe just right. so like the FBI can be off our asses just for a little bit. So we're not like constantly being like, ah, oh, shit, you know? Yeah, Cause I mean, I imagine every time you go to a store and some of the stores are actually owned by folks of uh, Pakistani descent or other kind of descent. But I guess every time that you go to the store, you were probably getting constantly abused. And first, because of the store and the store being run by folks of uh, Pakistani descent and that might be in urban areas and now because of COVID. So I imagine that that's something that you've had to deal with all your life. Yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, like September 11th was really like the turning where I just kind of was kind of made to feel that I don't really belong. Like I have to constantly prove my like patriotic ways. Like I have to constantly be like, Oh, I'm American, you know? And it's just like, you know, well, when white people go shooting the fucking place, are they asked to prove how American they are? You know, why do we have to constantly prove ourselves? I, I'm not, I've got nothing to do with Osama bin Laden or these assholes like ISIS. ISIS wouldn't even hire me. I'm attractive. Okay, the higher yeah. ugly people. Yeah, I just would be like, no, Mona, we cannot people. have you. You're not allowed. You're not allowed into our into our little party because you don't fit into our standard mode of what no. it should look like and I'm everything. Sorry, terrorists don't hire attractive people. They just don't. It's, it's the truth. <laughs> and the other thing is that you said you got to bounce off of everything because ugly right. people. Yeah, because yeah, ugly people thing. have not much to live. Like ugly yeah. guys, like. Fucking people in ISIS. So they kill themselves. I'm sorry. Is that too much? That's too harsh. That's too harsh. No, that's very sorry. true. I understand what you're saying. He's and covering his face. Come on, Dean. You're from Jersey, man. You're from Jersey. We talk shit like that. We talk a lot of shit. Come on. Dean can definitely relate. We, and we even talk shit like that in North Carolina. So we can definitely relate to what you're saying and everything. And then Virginia where Dean spent some time. So we definitely can talk a lot of junk. I know one of the things that you talk junk about on a regular basis, Mona, is the fact that, um, you know, as you hit around that age of your friend that you uh, lost to, passed away in uh, 
our sorrows definitely go out to you and everything. But that that yeah. person, um, and I don't know if they were single or not, but I know a number of times you've had conversations about how the people in your society, if you're like, I won't say if you're 20, because I've had a couple of your comedians that I've talked to on Twitter as well as a few that have been on the show, that if you're over yeah. 20 and not married, they're ready to like write y'all off. And you're sitting there going like, wait a minute, I still got to decide if I like the guy. And y'all yeah, still I'm doing it. I'm a corpse, Mark. I'm like past 25. Like I'm a corpse. Like uh, I'm like maybe fifth wife worthy of a Saudi prince. Like maybe. Like so, maybe. So you, you might be able to be the fifth wife or the sixth wife. <laughs> maybe. Listen, the older I get, the the further down on the on the on the you know on the notches I go. Like you know, it's like every year I get older. I go from the fourth to the fifth to the sixth. Like it just keeps dropping, you know? Wow. You just so, keep dropping so left and right. Are... That's not good. I mean, you're just dropping left and right. I think Kim was trying to join us in the conversation as we're getting ready to wind everything down and everything. Kim, are you having a good time? Because I'm t- I can see you over there laughing at us in this great conversation we're having. <laughs> Mark, are you going to – I I do have a question. I think Kim is muted, but I, I wanted to ask you – uh, can I jump off in one minute? I have to run off and get some more work done. I hope that's okay. That is perfectly fine. We do not mind you jumping off, and we thoroughly enjoyed having you. I think Kim was saying how much she enjoyed having you, and we would love oh, to have you, you come back on. Actually, Great. one of our lead producers, Ankit, who works with uh, um, Kim, is from India. So he's actually doing the show from a country that's not that far from your home area in terms of like where your family roots are. But Ankit is from India, so Listen, he's part of the family I- network. Advil, ibuprofen, it's the same thing. India, Pakistan, it's all the same. We're all, all the same, one big you know? family. This is what I say. Just one, one giant group of Right. We exactly. love each other. Exactly. And we're going to stay united. And, you know, thank you very much for showing up. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. All Have right. an awesome day, you guys. Yeah. And we're going to be so we okay. And I'll right. let um, say so thank you for joining us. And then, um, Mark, if you want to wrap up with uh, what's going to happen next week, and uh, we'll see everybody next week. Yep, yeah, definitely. Like I said, this is a very enjoyable conversation. Definitely enjoyed having the conversation. So next week, uh, we've got, uh, we'll got we be back on our other regular platform, which will be called Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. So me and Dean will be in our regular location in the evening time doing our thing. But I'm going to try to talk Dean into coming back and joining me again whenever I can on this particular platform as well. So depending on what he's got going on in the corrections office, Dean knows he's always welcome here as well as part of the uh, family and everything. So hopefully he'll be able to jump in on the conversation tomorrow. I'm still lining up guests. I've definitely got some comedians that I'm talking to and some activists for our show right here, The Mark Lee Show. And of course, I've got all kinds of great folks, including an author, Deborah Bloom, that will be on the Straight Talk Show on next Monday, which is actually the first Monday of June. So Deborah Bloom, Robin uh, Parrott, who is with Pretzel Kids, which teaches yoga to kids, as well as an author and uh, aspiring author and filmmaker, Samantha Inman. They'll be joining me on the evening show. And I'm already thinking about possibly getting them on this show, as well as lining up some other guests for here. So we're definitely trying to have constant conversation and great conversation, both on the Mark Lee show, as well as on our regular straight talk with Dean and Mark. And Kim is now seeing what a Dean looks like. So she's going to have to get that um, audio tape. Right. And we're going to uh, be seeing those thing an from opening. Dean. We're going to do an opening one day. He's going to come on our show one afternoon, and he's going to do my opening. But thank you all, and we'll see you next week.